a cool breeze fills the air, and the leaves are changing. A smell of smoky fires is carried on the breeze. The night sky is filled with the orange glow of a harvest moon. The season has changed, and fall is upon us. The smell of harvesting fruit is gone, and the lazy days of summer have passed. Each and every year, we experience this colorful display, and these sights and smells cause us to ponder the significance of what we see. All of nature is caught in the passing of time and the changing of seasons. We have this one hope. With the passing of fall and winter, spring and summer will soon be here. We live in a changing world that renews itself with each fruitful cycle. Stop and look at the passing seasons and ponder these questions. Do we change like the trees we see around us? Do we also have seasonal cycles we experience? These questions can be confusing because we are taught in Christian circles that Christians must bear spiritual fruit all the time. We walk away from these Bible studies thinking that Christians must be eternal evergreens. This can be confusing because we don't feel fruitful each and every day. We go through long seasons where we sense a death working in us. But why? The answer to these questions can be found in the revealing process used by the Holy Spirit to reproduce in us the image of Christ. The Apostle Paul taught the Roman Church that the righteousness of God must go through a revealing process, and we must endure this process through faith. With the coming of the new life of Jesus Christ, something must die, and that something is us. Our self-will must fall away in order for the image of Christ to manifest. This simple truth may be so, but what connection does this revealing process have with the changing of seasons? I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Jesus often taught parables, using the natural world around him as metaphors to portray the spiritual truths he wanted to communicate. Jesus did not use natural symbolism in a vain and foolish way. He selected his symbols with careful thought and application. Should this be the case, then why did Jesus use the symbol of a grapevine to teach the truths about our mutual relationship with him. Of all the tree symbols to choose from, why didn't Jesus use the mighty oak or the majestic cedars of Lebanon? Why not use the great pine forests that are evergreen and fragrant? So many symbols to choose from. Why select the lowly grapevine? Jesus purposely used the symbol of the grapevine 
to teach the truths about our abiding relationship with him. The metaphoric use of a grapevine is very important since it has a defined fruitful season. The grapevine experiences all four seasons, but it produces fruit in the summer season only. Since Jesus used this symbol to describe our relationship with him, then we must accept the symbol with all its seasonal changes. From the usage of this symbol, we can learn that Christians are subject to the same spiritual seasons that the grapevine endures throughout the year. Let's examine the four seasons of the grapevine and apply the seasonal symbols to our lives. Consider this question. Is a pruned grapevine just as fruitful as the vine laden with clusters of grapes? The answer to this question is yes. A vine being pruned is just as fruitful as a vine laden with clusters of grapes. Fruitfulness is a process we endure, not a product we produce. By our willingness to endure the fruit-bearing cycle, we glorify God our Father, and we show all the world that we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. What is the goal of our discipleship? This is a fair question, considering we have relegated true Christian discipleship to a series of classes designed to teach the doctrines of the church. What did Jesus teach about discipleship? The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Discipleship is a continual growing process of being conformed to the image of his master. The King James Version uses the English concept of perfection to describe this process. How is this possible? How can we be perfect like Jesus is perfect? There is no way we can stand before Jesus without any human flaw or weakness. We are human flesh. The idea of spiritual perfection is foreign and not attainable. Maybe our frustration with this verse can be found in the English word the translators used to describe our discipleship process. The Greek word found in this verse is katarsal, and this word has the application of a maturing process that is designed to repair, adjust, and restore a person to a healthy spiritual state of mind. The English concept of perfection is not found in this Greek word. Jesus taught that true discipleship must include the process of being repaired, restored, adjusted, and set in right order. In order to be a disciple of Christ, we must continually yield to the fruit-bearing process and allow our lives to be set in right order. The perfecting process is the fruit-bearing cycle. The goal of our fruit-bearing cycle is to reproduce in us 
the image of Jesus Christ. Let's read. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The image of Christ is not as abstract and unattainable as we think. Jesus taught in John chapter 5 verse 30 that by himself he could do nothing. God empowered Jesus to accomplish his mission. Simply stated, the image of Christ is self-weakness, God's strength. Jesus also taught that the heart of a servant is at the core of his heart and mind. The mind of Christ is the mind of the cross, which is the heart of a servant. We must understand that the servant attitude is a vital key to the image of Christ and the fruit of righteousness being reproduced in us. The servant attitude is also the key and path to the successful completion of the fruit-bearing cycle. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Apostle Paul understood that the image of Christ is a progressive revelation matured in us from one degree of glory to another. God cannot reveal all of His glory and image in us and through us at one time. We would be destroyed by such an action. Therefore, God made the image of Christ a seasonal experience. The fruit of righteousness is the progressive revelation of Christ's image that follows the path of the servant attitude. Jesus used the grapevine as a metaphor to describe our relationship with Him. Once we accept this fact, then we must accept the metaphor with all its various elements. The grapevine is not an evergreen. It is deciduous in nature. The natural changing seasons have a profound effect on the purpose and appearance of the grapevine. Once we accept the grapevine symbol as being descriptive of our relationship with Jesus, then we must accept the foregone conclusion that we are seasonal Christians. Since we are seasonal Christians, let's explore the four seasons associated with the grapevine to apply this symbol to our lives. Spring is a season of new life and birth. The vine awakens from its winter slumber to produce new growth and green leaf. The good smell of the tender grape is the promise of the soon coming harvest. The new branch sprouting in us is another season of revelation. The spring sun warms the earth and the sap returns to the branch from the root of the vine. In the Central Valley of California, during mid to late February, the air is fragrant with the smells of new blossoms coming on vine and branch. It is common to see orchards and vineyards awash with white and pink color. 
Spring is awakening from its cold winter slumber. Soon, this colorful spectacle will yield to new leaf sprouting on barren vine and branch. We see new growth coming on barren vines that have endured a season of pruning. Once again, we see that a barren stump of a vine is yielding to another fruitful cycle. What a powerful passion play we see every spring that describes the progressive revelation we must endure in order to be fruitful in Christ Jesus. The leaves and blossoms that sprout on the vine are the first signs we see of the fruit-bearing cycle. Ezekiel and John both indicate that leaves are the symbols for healing and ministry. Both prophets were allowed to see the tree of life in the heavenly New Jerusalem. They understood that the leaves of this holy tree can be used as medicine for the healing of the nations. With this symbol in mind, we see that spiritual leaves symbolize the spiritual ministry of healing. John used the Greek word theropia to describe the healing caused by these leaves. Theropia indicates more than just medicine. It's the root word of our modern word of therapy that is descriptive of a healing process. The leaves of the vine symbolize our spiritual gifts and ministry that we use in the kingdom of God, while the grape clusters symbolize the image of Christ being nurtured in us. During a spiritual spring, new ministry and life is awakening in our lives. The revelation of Jesus is new and fresh, and we feel alive to the things of God. Life may be difficult, but now we have hope. The cooling rain showers of spring slowly yields to the warming sun of summer. Out of the fallen blossoms, we see new grape clusters grow. Each day and night, the grapes grow larger and juicier. The fruit of the vine is setting. The summer season is when our relationship with Jesus ripens and matures our new revelation of Him. Another dimension, another faith, another glory of the image of Christ infuses our souls. During our spiritual summer season, our talents, gifts, and ministry symbolized by the grape leaves, provide healing and comfort to the body of Christ and the world at large. The shade provided by the massive grape leaves also protects the maturing grape clusters from the hot rays of the sun. The servant attitude that initiated our spiritual spring also ripens the image of Christ in us during our summer season. We are growing. We are changing. The more we allow the servant attitude, free expression, the more influence the image of Christ will have on us. During a summer season, we see the old man within us give way to our progressive revelation of Jesus Christ. This revelation is the harvest we give to Jesus. It is His image coming forth in our innermost being. Summer 
summer is good, and all is right with the world. A strange thing happens during the lazy days of late summer. Slowly, the corruption of human pride sprouts like a weed. We become proud of our spiritual growth and success. The ministry now becomes more important than Jesus. Religious pride slowly and silently erodes our servant attitude, and our spiritual summer comes to an end. The time comes when the joy of summer turns to the cooling of fall. The harvest is complete, and our leaves lose their health and fall to the ground. What is happening? Why are the leaves of our ministry turning these bright colors? The answer is simple. Our leaves are dying. The flow of the vital sap that comes from the vine is returning back to the root. Jesus wanted us to understand that He is our spiritual vine, and we are the branches that grow from the vine. When the sap returns to the root, the branches and leaves slowly die. There is only one attitude that can cause such death, and that attitude is pride. The prophet Isaiah understood that when we exalt our own righteousness, our spiritual leaves will fade and die. But we are all as unclean things, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. We, as Christians, believe we are immune from pride because we minister and serve in the body of Christ. We don't want to admit the fact, but we often become religiously proud in the midst of our spiritual success. Pride can be found in the hearts of all Christians, and this pride affects the image of Christ maturing in us. During fall, the sap from the root of the vine lessens, and our ministries cannot be sustained on human strength and wisdom only. We don't know why, but our joy of ministry is fainting in the regiment of daily church life. Subtle religious pride causes our spiritual leaves to fall to the ground. We leave the summer season of our ministry and enter a spiritual fall season. All of our great spiritual growth and beauty now falls to the ground. We sense the coldness of spirit and the changing of the season. Eventually, our branch is absent of the leaf of our spiritual season. We are naked before God, and we see ourselves as we are, not as we think we are. During the winter season, the grapevine appears to go dormant. The life-giving sap has left the branches and returned to the root of the vine. It's during the winter season that the vine dressers prune away the dead growth. Often, during a winter season, 
the face of the Lord seems distant or non-existent. We pray, but our prayers seem to fall to our feet. Keep in mind that the Lord knows the proud from a distance. A winter season is designed to prune away our dry spiritual growth and pride. The goal of our pruning cycle is to nurture the attitude of humility. Humility is the key to self-weakness and the servant attitude. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul discovered this principle in the midst of his own winter season. God is able to mature and nurture his image and grace in the midst of our self-weakness. God prunes away our pride in order to readjust our servant attitude. Remember, the servant attitude is a major key to the nurturing of the image of Christ. We must understand that the winter season is just as important to the grapevine as the season of harvest. A pruned grapevine is just as fruitful as a lush green vine laden with fruit. Fruitfulness is not a product we produce, but a process we endure. The length of our winter season is determined by our willingness to yield to the pruning of the Lord. Should we resist Jesus during the coldness of winter, we only frustrate our ability to produce future crops of spiritual fruit. Winter seasons are difficult and painful as our spiritual growth is pruned away. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Each Christian walks in a revelation of Jesus. Our personal relationship with Christ is our root in the faith. We all have the same imputed Jesus, but we all do not walk in the same degree of revelation. Revelation is not new insights into the Bible. Revelation is the dimension of Christ we abide in and experience. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to abide in Jesus, and this abiding process is the fruit-bearing cycle. Show mercy to people who may not be enjoying your degree of fruitfulness, because you do not know the spiritual season they are enduring. Our seasons are not linked. One person may enjoy the fruitfulness of summer, while another person endures the harshness of a cold winter. Ponder this thought. What happens in the lives of righteous saints when the season of fruit bearing has passed? The answer should be obvious. We are being prepared by the Lord for another season of fruitfulness. When we are not in a season of fruit bearing, then the Lord is nurturing our lives with great patience and faith in a future harvest yet to come. 
a fruitful saint is fruitful in every season of life, even though he or she may not be producing fruit. Fruitfulness is a process, not a product. A vine being pruned is just as fruitful as a flourishing vine laden with large clusters of vintage grapes. Just remember, new fruit can only sprout from new branches. We must change our point of perspective and stop seeing fruitfulness as a product we produce, but we must see it as a process of seasonal change. Each season we experience is an integral part of the fruit-bearing process. A frigid winter season is just as valuable to the vine as a summer season filled with the sweet fragrance of a soon coming harvest. We are so busy trying to produce the product that we fail to recognize and endure the process. It is natural to read John chapter 15 and think of fruit and lush green vines, but the principle Jesus taught indicated that the vine was subject to seasons. The grapevine is not an evergreen that produces fruit throughout the year, but it has a clearly defined season of fruit bearing. As surely as the vine will have a season of harvest, it will also have a season of pruning. Jesus used the grapevine as his symbol to communicate to us the maturing process his disciples would experience. We must take into consideration all the seasons and how they affect the vine, because each spiritual season is designed to work in our lives a spiritual work of righteousness. Once we understand that this process is part of our Christian walk, then we should yield to the nurturing of the Lord even in the midst of our spiritual winter. God has designed each cycle of the seasons to produce in us deeper dimensions of abiding in His presence. The Lord is concerned for His people. We are suffering in a state of confusion, trying to produce a product, but frustrating the process by our pride and fear. Many of God's people have endured long, frigid winters with no end in sight and have fainted in their faith because they frustrate the grace of God in ignorance. Stop and consider the vine experience. Do not see it just as a description of the corporate body of Christ, but perceive it from the perspective of an intimate, personal relationship with Jesus. You and the vine are one person. Envision the branches as your personal growth in the Lord, and the fruit, being the image of Christ, being reproduced in you.